Okay, hope this is uh, working. Uh, I'm going to go to bring up the site in another monitor here. Bear with me. Okay, so looks like we're live and awesome. Uh, looks like the Facebook chat is going. Let's see if I can test this before we get started. Okay, awesome. So uh, basically, um, I am talking about three things today. Uh, first of all. Stop this echo. Okay. Um, three things. Uh, one is uh, why I'm excited about the web and the liberty movement. Uh, two is what Liberty Web Alliance is, which is a project I'm a part of. And three, I'm going to share some uh, tips and tools for uh, how you can use the web to uh, advance the cause of liberty. Um, so my name is Blake Imason, and I am a full-time web developer uh, for small, medium-sized businesses. Uh, just do freelance, and I have a project I'm part of called Liberty Web Alliance. And if you go to libertyweballiance.com, you can um, check that out. So um, basically, why I think that the web is the best thing to happen to liberty is uh, a couple things. One is um, it's given us a platform that is very hard to control. Um, it's very hard to censor. Uh, the truth uh, is able to propagate and not be um, controlled. And it also has been a platform where people can speak to their, um, their circle, their circle of influence. Um, tools like Facebook, Twitter, um, Google Plus uh, have allowed you to um, extend the influence of your ideas by able to talk about them publicly and it's provide a great forum for public debate. Um, so I think that you know the last 10 years, uh, particularly the last five with uh, some of the stuff that's happened, um, like him or not, <laughs> with uh, Ron Paul and the um, sort of the resurgence of the liberty movement is that the internet has been one of the uh, chief ways that that has been accomplished. Uh, let me see here. Just checking to make sure. Okay, good stuff. Um, so, I think that I don't really have to sell you on the idea that the internet is a powerful tool. I mean, we're doing it with the Agora IO, uh, and most of the projects that people are a part of on here have a strong web-based component. Um, but I think that uh, we need to continue to be uh, purposeful about how we think about the way that these ideas are spread online. Um, for instance, some uh, interesting phenomenon I've experienced lately is on Facebook, if I talk about something liberty-oriented, um, you know, I've got 500 connections on Facebook, and they are from a wide range of um, uh, political and uh, just connections to me. And what happens is, if I post something that's pretty... Uh, um, very apolitical or uh, about the stateless society or something, while that sort of comment and um, discourse would not be something you'd talk about um, in most public arenas, if I mention it on Facebook, suddenly I've got all my uh, liberty friends jumping on the comments and saying, yeah, we agree, and uh, best idea ever, and um, you know, roads should be privatized, of course, and like, just there ends up being this uh, swell of agree agreement with um, the uh, comments that uh, occur on Facebook. So then my friends that are maybe more mainstream politically see that and they're like, not only is this a radical idea, but there are um, lots of people that feel this way and they're making good arguments about it. So basically, uh, that's one way that we should um, start to think about how we can extend our influence with particularly social media um, 
Another is when people start blogs, uh, they you know then share those blog posts with uh, their circle and their friends and family, and those can kind of you know get spread around. Um, there's some good interaction there between blogs and social media. Okay, so um, that is basically the rundown of why I think we should all be very excited about the web um, as a liberty community. Um, so what is Liberty Web Alliance? Um, I started Liberty Web Alliance about five, six months ago. I've been doing uh, web development, web hosting, and all kinds of tech support for um, Cop Block, Motorhome Diaries, Liberty on Tour, and a couple other projects. This is actually a uh, new shirt that Cop Block is selling. If you go to uh, copblock.org slash support, they've got all kinds of great t-shirts. Um, so I've been doing work for all these different uh, Liberty groups because you know, I'm a web developer and um, I already have a lot of the resources that I bought and it uh, doesn't take me as much time to um, you know, build sites here, uh, provide a little support on the side. Uh, so I needed a organization that I could bring in other uh, like-minded individuals, particularly those that work on the web, and I started Liberty Web Alliance. And so far, um, it's purely donation-based. Um, I don't make any money off of it. Um, we ended up renting a dedicated server from HostGator, uh, particularly for CopBlock, because it's the um, traffic trajectory is just off the charts, and now it's had like uh, seven or eight uh, sub chapters spring up too. Very exciting. So we rented a dedicated server, and um, it's pretty costly. It's something like 175 bucks a month, but uh, we're able to run all these sites on it. So we've created kind of a Liberty server, and we basically provide free hosting for um, worthy Liberty projects. And right now, I think we're at 15 or 16 members and got three or four more lined up about to go live. So in just a short amount of time, we're starting to um, build the amount of sites that we host for free on this. And um, we also provide a lot of tech support, help them with their WordPress themes, their plugins, and uh, use our expertise as web workers to help people that uh, their their specialization, their expertise in the division of labor might be um, activism of some sort, they might be video people, they might be writers, they are not web developers. Um, so it's been able to help those people uh, very quickly extend their influence by doing the things that they do best and letting Liberty Web Alliance help them with the you know, hosting and the tech side of things. So. Um, it's been uh, a lot of learning along the last couple months with it, but uh, it's starting to really grow. And if you are interested in um, either donating, just head over to LibertyWebAlliance.com, or um, perhaps more importantly, is we're trying to find other uh, people that do graphic design, web design, um, no blogging, no social media, no video to bring their es expertise in help these member sites. There's a lot of need out there, and it's just finding all these um, uh, you know, web developers and technicians that have the expertise and want to uh, work on projects. They just don't know um, uh, how to get plugged into them. So we're trying to plug them in. Uh, let me check the comments here and see. Um, if you have any questions as I'm going, please post them on this uh, live feed on the right. That would be great. Um, looks like we've got about 20 viewers right now. Okay, so um, I talked about uh, the um, reason why you should be excited about the web as the Liberty Movement, and then ran down what Liberty Web Alliance is. The uh, third thing I'd like to talk about is um, the tools and tips and tricks that we're um, finding along the way with this, some of the cool tools we're using. Um, basically most all of our member sites are running WordPress, which um, probably is true for 95 percent of the Liberty community. Um, we are huge fans of the platform. It's uh, growing fast, it's stable, it's secure, and most importantly there are you know, thousands of plugins that you can um, 
one click, they're activated, you've got you know forum or some kind of great functionality very easily. Uh, the other thing is it's easy to skin. Um, very quickly we can have professional looking attractive sites without you know, dropping thousands of dollars for custom web design. So um, probably not an unknown trick but um, we use WordPress uh, extensively. Um, a interesting uh, technique that we have is a tool called Backup Buddy which um, backs up your site and also will let you migrate it to another server and sort of explode it onto that server. Um, we have created a development install that is a WordPress site all configured for SEO, has all the plugins, has some themes, um, maybe some standard pages, contact forms, all that. So it's a complete development site with all the settings configured. We take a backup of that, put it on the server, and within minutes we can have a fully functional uh, pre-configured WordPress install for um, a new project. And that has allowed us, particularly with CopBlock, um, we created a Pittsburgh CopBlock and we did a you know, pretty specialized theme and uh, you know, there's like a map page and there's these different you know, um, CopBlock specific functions. And what we have done is, um, as new chapters have uh, developed, we have just taken a backup of that, basically cloned the site, and then you know next thing we know we have Virginia cop block, Carolina's cop block, Massachusetts cop block, like all these different um, sort of sister sites, and we've able to do that very quickly and efficiently, and it hasn't been much uh, cost in time or resources at all. So that's something neat. Um, some other organizations can probably make good use of that. Um, you know, domain names are only seven, eight bucks a year these days. Uh, so you could, you know, for uh, projects like maybe, um, I'm not really sold on the validity of it, but for instance, uh, the Wall Street protests, if you, um, if you wanted to start a blog, you know, talking about some of that, you could very quickly um, respond with a um, time appropriate blog that is devoted entirely to that subject. Um, we use GoDaddy for all of our domains that we buy. Um, Liberty Web Alliance actually ends up just purchasing a lot of the domains for our member sites because um, it's we already have the premium account and if they're willing to just donate you know ten bucks a year or whatever um, ten to twenty bucks a year we'll just buy the domain and we of course buy the um, privacy for it. So if you do a Whois lookup on the domain, you don't see that it's you know uh, John Smith or whatever. You'll see that it's you know Liberty Web or you won't even see Liberty Web Alliance. You'll see that it's uh, domains by proxy. So we're able to keep um, anonymity and protect ourselves and our member sites um, just a little bit more. Um, Some of the uh, ways that the member groups and also Liberty Web Alliance internally have been able to collaborate has actually been through Facebook secret groups. Now, um, there might be some uh, hesitation to use Facebook because of the, um, I guess, uh, privacy issue with them being able to you know, see what's going on in your group and how secure is that. But for probably 99% of all discussion, um, it would be okay if it was transparent. Um, you know, the best uh, use of Facebook groups I've seen in all the projects I'm part of has been CopBlock. And in CopBlock, they have a group where uh, all the writers and editors are part of it, and they will talk about what posts they're writing at the time, and they'll ask for feedback and for people to edit them. And it's worked really well because Facebook is a place where people are already going, <laughs> like it or not. Um, so this provides a easy way for them to interact with each other and uh, collaborate. We tried doing a, uh, a collaborative site and allowing like a uh, you know, ticket system or question and answer form, but it is so hard to get people to adopt 
other tools and to you know, remember yet another login that if you can plug into something like Facebook that you know has the notifications and everything for um, activity that is a really um, great system to use another tool that we've been using is Google Apps for Domains and this allows basically Gmail accounts on your um, domain so uh, you know info at Liberty Web Alliance that is a Gmail account which has all kinds of um, great features where we can have analytics accounts tied to it and use it for Google products like YouTube um, with just you know the one login that, which is a Google login um, again there's probably privacy issues and security issues that you might run into with that um, if anyone has any suggestions on uh, securing email in particular with uh, you know, public key cryptography or something like that uh, I'd love to hear them if you could uh, post in the stream about them um, let me take a um, quick pause here um, looks like we've got about 20 people on here let's see um, let's see I can't see the comments um, if you want to ask questions on this if you could just go to um, Twitter and maybe um, tweet at Liberty Web A I can uh, pick those up uh, or I'm seeing this Facebook chat here on the side um, seen a couple comments on there uh, if it doesn't show up for you you can just go to Twitter a um, couple of the things I've noticed uh, watching all these different groups um, some of the other ones I'm involved with are uh, peace freedom prosperity movement uh, James Cox and Mike Shanklin um, then you know there's uh, all the stuff that uh, Adamo Freeman and uh, Pete Ayer are doing like uh, Cop Block, Liberty on Tour, Prisoners for Liberty, um, all those sites. A couple of things I've noticed is it's really helpful uh, to have someone that uh, acts as leader or is kind of the person that people look to. It doesn't mean you have to be a dictator and it doesn't mean that you, know, you have to give orders or anything, but I, I have found maybe it's you know conditioning or something that people kind of uh, look for someone to say yes this is the direction we're going or you know no actually um, better to not do that um, Adam or Adamo Coplock does a great job of this and uh, they're a very decentralized organization and there aren't uh, there's a lot of you know authority and permission based uh, stuff but they are um, they're able to have a you know long leash but they come often to the um, the sort of you know the leadership of cop block for advice and guidance and uh, that's worked out great for them I think okay awesome I see uh, Stephen Kinsella's on there um, let's see here. okay so um, Oliver, did you have a question on uh, privacy or were you making a comment on how to keep things um, secure? Because that's actually something that, as we're still a pretty young organization, we're trying to figure out what is the best balance between um, efficiency and quick start and all that uh, versus being um, both secure and also uh, keeping things private and some level of anonymity because the reality is as groups grow particularly I'm thinking you know cop block they've gotten um, some pretty crazy hate mail and they've actually had cops threaten them and uh, they've even had a couple comments on the site that were uh, like um, propaganda that were we traced the IP address and it was actually Department of Homeland Security um, it was probably just some you know intern there or something messing around I don't think it was actually you know psyops uh, trying to manipulate things but the the reality that the more impact you are having the more you are a target uh, is something that we are trying to figure out answers to and if anyone has some suggestions that'd be great okay uh, Stefan Kinsella, Stefan Kinsella. 
Um, awesome. Uh, so let's see here. What else? Um, any questions about um, getting uh, an online presence? Most of you have one. Um, I would suggest too that if uh, if you don't, if you aren't into the Liberty Movement online, which if you're watching this, I probably guarantee you're part of one project or another, is it's really easy to start up a, a blog where you or a group of people write. And uh, if you're interested in starting one, just contact us at Liberty Web Alliance, and um, we could probably uh, set you up with um, a site pretty quickly if you're interested in doing that. Uh, if that's not something you want to start personally, uh, join a team uh, with the Peace, Freedom, Prosperity dot com site. They have I don't know like 20 different writers, um, varying levels of activity, but um, that is a good example of a project that you can join if you aren't ready to commit to a site yourself, but you want to share your ideas and um, sort of, you know, express some of the um, things you've been wrestling with or solutions you figured out. It might be a good idea just to join a group rather than creating a new one. All right, let's see. Any? Uh, thanks, Valerie. <laughs> Um, okay, see, so yeah, Stefan, we got. Well, uh, okay, Stefan makes a great point that I hope I'm pronouncing your name right now. Um, that you know, when people say, "Well, the internet is great, but it was created by DARPA," you know, the government involvement, blah 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 blah. We need state action. Um, I think that um, you know, yes, tragically, it is something that had government related beginnings but uh you know government still you know is made of in individuals and those individuals create it so eh, it's not like uh the internet was some kind of you know the government created it um it was the result of a lot of very creative people that made it and regardless of its beginnings uh it is now so decentralized and the technology has um, just blossomed and grown so much that I don't think it's something they can easily control. Um, the um, you know stuff with Tor and BitTorrent and uh, the anonymity, and I even hear that there's people talking about creating like an alternate internet that if there was government control that you would be able to go onto this alternate internet and uh, you know get information out. So um, yeah, it is tragic that it had government uh, start. But I think now it's something they can't control, and now it is something that um, it's kind of like they've let the uh, cat out of the bag. I'm not sure if I'm answering the, the question <laughs> alternate. Yeah, Stefan. Okay, got it right now. I think um, Stefan asked another great question. Thank you so much. Um, why do you think people have talked about encrypting emails, et cetera, for 15 years now, but it hasn't caught on? Um, I think that's a terrific thing to ask, and I think I'm part of the problem because I haven't encrypted stuff myself. Um, I explored the public key thing a little bit a couple years ago, and I think the problem is partly that it doesn't integrate, at least to my knowledge, with tools we're already using like Gmail and the different email accounts we have. So it's not, uh, to my knowledge, something that's easily integratable with um, the systems we're already using. And the other thing is that so far, you know, despite all of the, you know, crackdowns on this and that and the, you know, statism and tyranny that's rampant, so far I don't think that we've seen um, at least public examples of um, those of us in the movement who have had, you know, email transcriptions that have been, um, you know, taken out and used against us or sabotaged through that, as far as I know. Um, then the third reason might be that just um, for probably most of what we uh, correspond with, it's not stuff that we really care so much if it gets in the public domain. Uh, I mean, it's no secret that we all are for a stateless society, 
and if you know someone saw that in an email, you know, would that be bad? Um, so, you know, a uh, or one, it's not easily integratable with systems we use. Two, there hasn't been examples of known abuse. And three, uh, we probably, for most of what we do, um, if the emails got leaked, it wouldn't be a bad thing necessarily. Um, at least for me personally. Um, that being said, I would love to see um, encryption and security uh, get much better with email systems. Um, I have thought about, you know, it would be bad just in terms of like building a profile on someone if you know your Gmail contents of hundreds of megabytes of data, um, which is probably already accessible by the government some way or another. Um, but how quickly they could build a profile on you, um, you know, who you know, what your family is, what your likes, dislikes, um, your your manner of talking and everything. Um, so I think this is something that probably is a problem that we haven't realized is a problem yet. Uh, Stefan says, libertarian grad school dorm room bull session query. <laughs> if the internet and or the internet networked web of computers someday wakes up, becomes self-aware AI, does it have rights? If so, if your computer is part of it, do you lose property rights in your computer since it's now part of the body of this new AI creature? Uh, I guess that uh, that's a philosophical question. I don't know how serious Stefan is with that, but uh, is being a sentient being enough to have uh, rights? And uh, I think that's a very interesting question. And I'm not going to tackle that one here, but uh, that could be a pretty hysterical blog post. Um, uh, good stuff. Uh, another thing that was brought to my attention recently uh, related to email security and privacy and um, all of that issue is social networking and what we're storing and building up on Facebook. Um, the amount of data that they have on us on Facebook can be pretty uh, scary when you think about it. Um, so one thing that is a project that I'm interested in is uh, called, uh, I'm not going to say it right, it's a diaspora, D-I-A-S-P-O-R-A, -A, which is trying to build a social network that um, you own all the content and it's, you know, it's in your possession. Another entity or corporation doesn't control all your, you know, status updates and photos and videos. So that's an interesting uh, concept that hasn't really uh, um, come forth yet. Okay, uh, Jordan says, open PGP plugged into Thunderbird. It's not hard to do email encryption. I use a Gmail account. Okay, so uh, thanks so much, Jordan, for uh, relaying that. If you want to encrypt Gmail or anything you run through Thunderbird, OpenPGP is a solution. Um, that's great uh, if you're running Thunderbird. If someone could let me know if there's one for um, you know, Outlook or some of the other tools, I end up checking email mostly through web-based Gmail. Um, and I doubt that there's a plug-in yet for that, but um, if you're interested in the security, you know, just download Thunderbird and install this uh, OpenPGP um, plugin onto it. Um, okay, so um, let's see here. We're half an hour in. Um, any uh, direction anyone would like to go with um, talking, um, I can talk as long as uh, up to the next session, or uh, we can break early. Um, but uh, any questions specifically about um, starting a website or um, you know getting with bloggers or anything like that? see if I have anything from my notes that I missed talking about. Okay, well, uh, I think I'll probably end it there unless there are any uh, other questions, but uh, so just kind of in summation, uh, 
Um, again, I'm Blake Imason, and I run LibertyWebAlliance.com. And if anyone would like to uh, help us, we are really looking for uh, additional team members. I think we've got about um, seven or eight active right now, which is great, but there's so much more demand. Um, Okay, actually, uh, we'll stop for a second. Valerie uh, is wondering if there are people start networking towards that. Uh, uh, if you could expand on that comment a little bit, Valerie, that'd be helpful. But I think maybe uh, what's being asked is, you know, how do you get into the movement? And I would say, if you're interested in uh, starting to become more part of uh, some of these organizations that are actually having impact. Uh, look for the people that are spearheading them. Uh, connect with them on Twitter, Facebook. Um, most of them are really stand-up guys and gals and will connect you in pretty easily if you're actually sincere about it. Um, so th that's, uh, that's one thing you can do is try and connect with people through social media. Um, see what kind of meetups there are in your uh, region would be another way. Uh, something that's interesting too when we're talking about impact, uh, just like to highlight again, cop block, is that um, you know there's been several court cases now uh, relating to filming police and uh, police accountability and what you're allowed to um, you know, say or you know, film police uh, in regards to. And they've actually been having an impact with successes in those court cases and probably public opinion is starting to change towards being very open to the idea that you, know, you should be able to film cops if you want. Um, so that's very exciting that this isn't just um, activism that's you know contained to our circle or whatever that uh, we aren't just you know sitting around um, smoking cigars and talking about uh, Mises and Rothbard but these ideas are actually reaching mainstream public and um, we're starting to have an impact. Um, you know, ideas are spread through individuals, and a lot of this uh, positive interaction has come through, you know, just people talking on the street and uh, propelling the movement forward that way. Okay, so I think with that, I'll uh, wrap up. Um, if you want to uh, send me an email or uh, connect with me online, I'd be very happy to talk more about this stuff with you. Um, you can send any emails to info at libertyweballiance.com. Um, follow us on Twitter, uh, Liberty Web A, and uh, also on Facebook if you just search Liberty Web Alliance. We're on there too. Um, great. I uh, hope this has been helpful. And if there's anything I can do to help uh, with your web presence or getting you hooked in, uh, let me know. All right. Have a good one.